haven't even started. So today guys, I'm going to show you another little cool piece of technology that I found just by chance online. It's called an Intel NUC or Nook. Um, I bought the NUC 5 CPYH. It's just the model number of this particular unit. Uh, what's in here is actually a very small form factor, um, but very powerful computer. Uh, Celeron, I believe it's a dual core processor. I don't remember which process technology or core series it runs on, but it has an HDMI that supports 4K, and from everything I read online, the streaming of 4K is actually of reasonable quality. Um, what this comes with is the chassis, comes with a wireless and Bluetooth card, comes with that little bit of I.O. Uh, it comes prepped for a two and a half inch hard drive, I'll get to what I chose for that, and it comes prepped for one DDR3 SODIMM, which I'll get to that choice as well, up to eight gigabytes in capacity. So to open it, that's worth mentioning I bought this open box, so it's not in perfect condition, but the top we have the actual NUC PC. This is the front, you see um, audio out, I believe that is just traditional eighth inch mini jack, no optical on the front. You have a, um, the color differentiates uh, power live all the time versus on only, I believe. They're both USB 3.0 on the front and the back. You have two more USB 3.0 ports, gigabit ethernet. You have your HDMI port, which again supports 4K. It might support HDR, we'll find out. Uh, VGA, and we have another port here, which is 8th inch mini jack audio or optical toss link, and of course the power supply input. This particular um, model, I guess, comes with a power adapter and multiple uh, different country um, <laughs> power adapter leads. There you see whatever is on the bottom, basically stating not to throw it away. Um, owner's manual, probably instructions on how to add components. Looks like this is for the Celeron processor, which is soldered to the board, but some people have had good um, luck with actually replacing those by desoldering and resoldering. <laughs> Free trial of McAfee, interesting. Um, and then this, this is a VESA mount plate, so you can actually mount this to the back of your computer monitor if you're using it as a desktop, which is kind of neat. Um, and then, oh, here's the first sign that this is open box. It already has the US plug on it. So, the rest of those are just different uh, world plugs, I'm guessing, down there. So, we'll get that out of the way. Back to the actual Nook hardware. Um, in order to actually install everything on this, I'm going to come up to the bottom and we're going to undo the four Phillips screws. So here's the inside of the Nook. Um, the base lid has our I.O. and the slot for the 2.5 inch hard drive, or SSD. It seems like, uh, I bought this on Amazon, but it seems like a lot of the recommended items were SSD for this particular uh, <laughs> usage case, which it, it does make sense. Um, it will make the limited hardware um, and power lot more effective. Um, but what I chose is actually a hybrid SSD. So what this is, it's a 500 gigabyte notebook hard drive that has an 8 gigabyte NAND uh, flash built into it as well. And what this will do, um, it's really cool for an application like this. After you install your operating system and or a couple of applications and you open them a few times, the controller inside of this drive on the board will remember what you use often, and it will take the first eight gigabytes of commonly used data, and it will mirror it from your hard drive to the NAND, and it will treat that like an SSD. But all of your stuff that you never use, like the occasional movie, will sit on the 500 gigs of hard drive, which is dirt cheap. Uh, this unit was really inexpensive. I wanna say it was $43 or something, so that's what I wanted. I wanted a fast boot, um, decently fast web browsing, and a lot of space for movies. For memory, as I mentioned, one DDR3 SODIMM slot, and here's what I bought. This is just an 8 gigabyte SODIMM, it was the cheapest one they had. It says it's made for Mac, but it doesn't matter. 
Um, this will support up to eight gigabytes. They list as four and eight compatible. Doesn't even list as compatible two, but I bet it is. Um, one other port I forgot to mention is the SD slot. And this isn't just an SDHC, so you're not limited by 32 gigs. You could buy a 256 gigabyte, you could buy a terabyte SDXC and stick it in there. Up to two terabytes, I believe that's the limit of that standard. So that's pretty cool. Um, just as occasional file transfer or storage if you don't have uh, good corded or cordless internet. There again is your 80211 AC and Bluetooth, I think 4.0 adapter, which is built in. Underneath there, there's actually a second slot and you can run um, another SSD in there. I forget what those are called. They're M something SSDs. They run directly off the PCIe bus. They're very, very fast. Um, so you could do that as well. They don't advertise it on this one as being compatible, but it is. You will have to get a different standoff to go between the board, the SSD, and the wireless card, but that's really not that big a deal. So uh, I'm gonna shut off the camera again for a second. I'm just gonna open the memory, slot it in, and install a hard drive, which looks very easy, <laughs> and uh, we'll kind of go from there. So here's our sodium. And if you've never built a PC before or upgraded a notebook, more like it, all you have to do is push this in at an angle until you really can't see the pins anymore, and then push down, and that is installed. Uh, and on the SSD here, this is almost even, even easier. That is literally it. They could not have made this easier if they had tried. Do that up, tighten your four Phillips screws. And the most important step, of course, removing the protective film, which is like pulling off sunburned skin or a band-aid, except much more satisfying. Oh no. <laughs> That's supposed to be easy. Now I got my finger juice all over it. Gross. Having a weird green screen problem. Well, Windows 10 installed, no problem. Uh, it wasn't letting me install Windows 7. For whatever reason, it uh, won't see USB peripherals on the Windows 7 installer, so right now I'm just throwing Firefox on it. I'm gonna try to get uh, PC Mark, do some benchmarking just to see what we're dealing with, and then I'll get uh, all the drivers up to date, get YouTube open, and try some 4K um, to see how that processes. Um, video as well as see how the HDMI audio output works through my TV and through my stereo here.